and good afternoon. <coughs> the Center for Israel-China Policy, uh, uh, named for Moshe Dayan, the Glazer Program, was uh, recognized as a research program approximately a decade ago. And today, it is being supported by the Glazer Foundation, and thanks to that foundation, it has achieved the uh, scale that it's 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 as big as it is. Uh, if you could please uh, raise your hands, those of you who are part of that center, approximately a center, half of them are here, and the rest are in reserves. And the conference that we are doing today on a national technology program in Israel. Uh, in honor of the publish uh, the uh, publishing of Sobelman's uh, memorandum is a story of of uh, looking for donkeys and finding royalty if, if you will it's like a journey uh, of an of exploratory uh, exploration and expedition the Cent glazer center began began basically with the focus on Israel-China relations, but very quickly it reali we realized that it uh, this was occurring against the backdrop of superpower relations. One day, Ariel stepped into my office and said to me, what's going on with the worms? We need to update the games. It's an operational game, by the way. <coughs> Uh, he was. He entered. He came to me very enthusiastically, and he said that I'm come here to write a book. I would like to write a book, and I would like to write it about standardization. So I say to him, I'm very happy, right? That standardization and standards and their uh, role in designing the international system. So I said to him, oh, you know, a book, you know, people don't, not too many people read books these days. How do you know that standardization is the big idea right now? Uh, uh, so we'll set out and we'll figure it, we'll figure it out as we, as we go along. So we ultimately reached a certain uh, junction uh, in the area of technology. It's the focal point for superpower competition, the, the competition between uh, the U.S. and China. And so that in that triangle of the Israel-China-U.S. relations, you, you have U.S.-China, U.S.-Israel, and China-Israel. We all understand within that triangle, and all those involved understand that technology is key to economic power, military power, the matter of information. Everybody he today is hearing about uh, our AI robotics energy from renewable sources. There are those who said that data is the oil of the new age of, uh, of our times. And uh, the, and this is the, the competition is over all of this, basically of getting there, maintaining the edge, achieving achievements and preserving those achievements. With uh, this activity somewhere between research and development and its production and, uh, and security. And in days like this, as we've heard from Ben, that we in Israel are in a long and tough uh, battle, as Dayan said, uh, uh, with um, a very bloody uh, battle, a many day battle. It's very difficult to talk, to deal with long-term, broad-scale issues, but uh, but if we look uh, soberly at uh, Israel's uh, mil military power, this is the result of a technological uh, achievements that were made and decisions that were made in the past. You don't have to be too creative to understand that our future and our security security and our ability to survive here in this area and this, in this world is heavily dependent on the dependence and achievements that will be achieved today and made today that will serve the, uh, us in the future. So to avoid taking too much time because, and I'm getting uh, some hints here from my deputies, Galia, I would like to thank the Glazer Foundation that enabled us to conduct this uh, uh, great, uh, uh, wonderful activity. And I would like to thank everybody who's come 
who's contributed and who's participating in the audience and in a little while we'll also hear from the panelists we'd like i'd like to uh, thank the institute and the center staff for organizing the conference and ultimately i'd also like to thank uh, Ariel uh, Sobelman, the Iron Man, who, through his uh, curiosity and, uh, and his um, his great efforts, he's brought us to where we are today. I wish everyone a very pleasant and fruitful conference. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to deviate from my uh, what I customarily do and read uh, from uh, something I've written down. That's um, I saw for the good of accuracy. I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to speak exactly 15 minutes. Uh, so please, uh, you can be calm about it. So, Member uh, the AI board uh, and, and the current deputy. Uh, Head of uh, the the head, Professor Manuel Trachman Trachtenberg, the director of the Institute, uh, Brigadier Ge uh, uh, Major General Hyman, the head of the Glazers Se Center, and uh, uh, dear uh, speakers, welcome everybody. Dear guests, I'm very excited and I'm very happy that you decided to come to this conference on uh, technology and national strategy. About four years ago, <coughs> basically for the first time, uh, a, a incredibly, uh, a, a, it's incredible competition between uh, the US and China in technology until it uh, broke out as, as eventually it got, it got uh, worse and worse. And part of this uh, chip warfare is like a, is a, is a fight over a hegemony and uh, creating a new world order that will replace the current order. These two uh, superpowers identify technology as one of the central tools for preserving or achieving uh, inf information or to achieve in a military edge and international standing. So why is it chips? of all things uh, we could uh, we could um, s compare those uh, silicon components those chips that are in every computer today to the smallest brick of technology or the uh, the most basic molecule of technology today uh, various computer systems uh, uh, um, smart uh, vehicles uh, AI, AI cyber all of these are ultimately dependent on on hardware uh, systems on wires basically to make them go in other words the chips chips i believe the chips are basically the source of technology from which a huge uh, chain of uh, a value chain uh, derives the most expensive chip that the humans have ever it's much cheaper to uh, settle Mars than to build all of the uh, factories we have in the world it's an incredible expense and uh, the barriers, the entry barriers to this market are very high, and the minimal entry ticket is about $10 billion per factory, per plant. This, these incredible uh, uh, costs made them basically the uh, holy grail of technology, the uh, crown jewels, and there are very few countries that have the economic power to to make those major expenditures, and these countries created a an exclusive club, club and bringing uh, geostrategic uh, prestige to those countries. And all over the world, uh, the connection between tech, uh, national security and technological uh, standing started to solidify, that connection tried, started to uh, crystallize. Uh, technology was always part of, uh, the, the, of military theory and practice, but it seems like in recent years technology has been a value in and of itself and has been set as one of the components of national security uh, and power in Israel and in the world, as one of the, uh, the uh, designers of, of uh, the world order, uh, in, including w in understanding the competition between the U.S. and China, but there's also or mainly in light of its impact on Israel and our ability to achieve our role to be leaders and to create uh, a good and recent institutions for decision makers and strategists in this country. Now what Asaf said, naturally, uh, the 
In many cases, uh, we're dealing with things that are over the horizon, and strategic discourse is always in this uh, constant tension between long-term planning and immediate needs. This is always true, but and of course, uh, it's, uh, and especially when it comes to wars, when there's uh, a, 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 a limited connection to a long-term str uh, strategy. Sometimes reality allows us to take peer into the strategic uh, challenges that are clear to us in real time as well. For instance, the story of the day after has been uh, has been discussed for the past few months in public discourse with regard to the Isra Israel's uh, political and security architecture that Israel which was just a fashion. One of there are certain types of day after. The first is technological. One dimension is about investigation and questions regarding how successful the state of Israel is in exhausting and exploiting its economic its technological edge in its current uh, battlefield, both in defense and offense. Also, the use of uh, Israel's standing with regard to the competition between uh, the US and China. For instance, where is uh, in Israeli knowledge and innovation going, to the east or to the west? But if, I feel that the most important day, uh, thing is creating uh, the conditions for uh, the success of Israel's technology in the future and ensuring our competitive abilities. This, this contributes significantly to our GDP, and it's about a half of our exports in Israel. And it also has the duty and privilege of creating a lot of the money uh, to cover the cost of the war and close our deficits. In today's discussion, certain issues will illustrate how Israel will continue to com com compete, but how that's been eroded already today and our standing made deteriorate even more. Our foundation, the foundation behind this uh, conference is the memorandum uh, that's behind this, the National Technology Plan in Israel. In light of uh, what we're going through today, I'm, uh, it's, I'm happy to present this. It's a product of two years of work, including uh, somebody, uh, TZ, which I can't unfortunately uh, pu uh, publicize his name. This is a comprehensive study that uh, on the development of uh, technological competition between uh, Israel and uh, between China and uh, the U.S. Some of these. Uh, and, and other countries which have similar uh, economic power to Israel, like Air Ireland or Holland. In this uh, study, we're trying to see how leading countries compete and the policies that they employ in order to create and uh, and uh, strengthen their technological abilities. In geopolitics, this has uh, become part of this course. Of, everybody agrees that this will impact impact the uh, local industry. As you know, Israel is very important in the international ch uh, chip ecosystem. Local Israeli and, and multinational companies operating in, in Israel develop many of the most advanced chips, which are many of the devices that we all use. Now we don't even know that they were ultimately that they were originally developed in Israel. And of course, there's Intel, the manufacturing giant that, to a great extent, uh, c connected its future to Israel and it's expanding its investment. This this study is trying to characterize and and create policy recommendations and alternate courts of action that could become a foundation for further study and this is also perhaps the first attempt to create a to create a poss possible uh, program for a national strategy now in the background one of the most important developments in in the technological uh, development is the American law uh, that was passed in August 22 with incredible bipartisan support. It has a huge scale, including uh, with about $2.8 billion, out of which uh, uh, incredible amounts will be given to institutes in order to bring manufacturing back home. As we deepened our investigation, we understood that the market is a watershed line and a strategic turning point where the state of Israel, uh, sorry, the Israel and the United States has decided to change. This. It's a paradigm that may uh, change how the industry has operated uh, in the way that, unlike the way it had been doing for decades. And tr under the category of globalization, the story of the law of chips is tied intimately to globalization process and deglobalization 
uh, that the world has been going through in recent years. And then now it's time to research and to write. And I, rem I rem recall uh, a, a funny thing that Professor Emmanuel explained to me. It, this assist, a book is kind of like a birth, he explained to me. It starts with a, a euphoric moment of incredible uh, bliss. There's nothing more uh, happy, uh, better than this. But then, the, then there's the painful uh, childbirth. And of course, I don't, obviously, I don't know how childbirth uh, fails at a personal level. But this is an, an, an opportunity to say thank you to a few things f uh, and who have helped us reach this place. You can't do any uh, study with, uh, without any uh, founda foundation. The Glazer Foundation is probably the best host that we could have asked for. And uh, we couldn't have had this uh, research without the cooperation between industry and academia. And this was thank to, thanks to the sabbatical that I was able to to take uh, uh, understanding that th this discourse and a mutual uh, uh, that that this will ultimately uh, contribute to the state of Israel. Uh, uh, it will be an interesting model, the combination of industry and research in Israel. Of course, the team of researchers and uh, multidisciplinary students, uh, students uh, and uh, thanks to the institute, we have the uh, wonderful connections so that we have go uh, a discourse with academic academia and inter uh, international research institutes out of, all over the world. In terms of this, once I ultimately understood that there's, there was also translation graphics in preparation for print, and I won't uh, thank everybody because I don't have enough time, but I want to thank everybody. And uh, I really, I also feel a duty here to mention my father, Rabbi Yosef Joel Sobelman, uh, and my mother, who, who may she live for many years. For, uh, uh, I had them to thank for being here. Uh, this, it's, it's hard, I, f I think, to identi identify the absolute starting point of technology. I feel that the starting point was the 1984 economic plan. This process started with a government decision that basically changed the entire economy without uh, detracting from the problematic economic uh, behavior in the early 80s. There were exogenic uh, um, factors that may made it clear to Israel that this economic decision basically was uh, meant to uh, destroy uh, uh, local production. And this was just one government decision. The kibbutz is the various textile, textile factories were severely damaged, but ultimately uh, this was meant to bring us to being the startup nation and a high-tech economy. Globalization caused a creation of, of long and uh, 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 global supply chains from uh, bringing raw materials, minerals, and uh, introduction intellectual property to the east to the manufacturing sectors that moved eastward and from that back westward through a web of all kinds of finished products that have been distributed to the markets in many places this is founded on the idea of a flat earth and the f the uh, the assumption that there will be less violent conflicts and there will be less obstacles to global trade. But there was also a faith developed that, that de, uh, in economic interdependence could be a balancing factor. And then Corona, COVID-19 happened, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the climate uh, uh, collapse, the, the crisis with the 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 uh, threat to navigation routes. These have all uh, affected the trade routes, the and shipping lanes. They have also the world has started to also understand uh, Israel, uh, China's real aspiration not to just be a global uh, a global manufacturing plant. Of course, technology is one of the basic building blocks in uh, China's understanding, which could ultimately become a leader in the world. And this is how ultimately we've seen this world changing before our very eyes. The, uh, ultimately, uh, what led to industry moving to the East became made what the West more dependent in Asian production with, with, with very high uh, geostrategic costs. And after, after uh, going through the United States and EU, Japan, South Korea, and D J Taiwan, it looks like the world is looking for the, a new um, industrial mix uh, 
uh, between R&D and production. Now, this is an expensive thing to do. When uh, companies are subsidized to set up plants in Israel, that's basically the pr something that the private market can't do itself. The, the, the amount of uh, hardware that you need, it's, it's an incredible amount. And this, in order for uh, countries to continue being competitive, Israel is no different. Uh, we're, our, we're less competitive if we don't uh, invest the necessary inputs. So finally, in this conference, we'll talk about the questions on the emerging technological issues uh, through the in, in, th that, that they were invested in. We'll also talk about the, uh, the limited reserves of manpower and which will and, uh, and uh, policies that will allow more parts of Israeli society to find their own place in the in this market and of all, of all, above all I hope that this the globalization we see globalization totally change and the new trend is strengthening the connection between production and R&D and this what was changed by a government decision could and should be changed by another government decision. I wish everybody a very successful and fruitful conference. Thank you very much.